Okay, the last talk of the day will be given by Dong Gang. Uh, the title is Distributed Private Randomness Distillation. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. Uh, my talk is on distributed private uh, random distillation, which is based on a joint work with Carol Hodesky and uh, Andrew Splinter. Here is the outline of my talk, contains uh, three parts, introduction, result, and summary. So first, let's look at uh, the randomness. Randomness has various applications in many fields. However, in classical world, uh, usually only pseudo randomness is generated because its value is predetermined in advance by a hidden variable. However, in principle, it's rather easy to generate uh, true randomness in quantum framework. For example, Alice can perform a measurement of the plus state in the basis zero and one. The outcome is totally random, and it is even private to the adversary if, in the sense that here the security comes from that the pure state exclude any correlation from, the, from any other quantum system. So let's look at uh, the case when Alice and Eve share a Bell state. Here still, Alice can generate randomness. But here, the randomness is not private because uh, Eve can learn the uh, random value by performing the same measurement or his system to learn the uh, randomness value. So if you look at the reduced state of Alice, it is the maximum mixed state, which is regarded as uh, local noise in our work. So from here, we can see that local noise itself is useless to generate uh, private randomness. So then, what, how about for the uh, a general mixed state. And indeed, this scenario is studied by Berta, Fuzzy, and uh, Weiner in that uh, paper. They consider the, the uh, question that, uh, of course, they consider the in the asymptotic case, in the asymptotic setting, they consider there are many uh, copies of uh, mixed state rho AE, and uh, what Alice do to generate uh, private randomness, he, he perform a global unitary and then uh, make a measurement or part of the system to generate, uh, uh, to generate uh, uh, randomness and outcome is uniformly distributed and also uh, whatever the outcome is, the reduced state of uh, Eve remain the same. So the question is that, then, what is the optimal rate for given a mixed state? Uh, the answer is given by this formula. And here, it is the conditional phenomenon, phenomenon entropy. And indeed, there is a hidden point in the BFW setting, uh, in the sense that uh, we have to assume that uh, there, is the, uh, there exists another party, Bob, trusted by Alice. Why? Because Alice herself cannot verify the correlation with uh, Eve. So in the, in the spirit of being cautious in cryptography, we have to assume that uh, Eve hold all the purification of Alice state. That means uh, rule AE is pure, unless Alice already knows his trusted friend, Bob, hold part of the purification. So then, why not an active Bob? And indeed, this is the, the scenario we're considering. Here, Alice and Bob would like to generate uh, randomness at their side individually, and uh, their goal is to 
generate uh, randomness such that uh, the randomness is independent and uh, secure to if and uh, even if cannot learn the, any correlation between their random values. And indeed here we, we have four different settings. Uh, we may or may not have local noise and we may or may not uh, allow classical communication. Here classical, classical communication means that uh, Alice and Bob can exchange their quantum system through a diffusion channel that simulates the classical communication. So is this scenario interesting? Yes. Why? Because it looks like a dual setting to the distributed data compression that was studied by Slavin Uf in classical information theory, whose natural dual setting does not exist classically, but does quantumly. Uh, so natural question to ask is, what about the region to generate uh, local randomness? Uh, before I state the result about that, let's, uh, uh, let's have a warm up. So consider the entanglement swapping protocol here. Alice share an uh, entanglement pair uh, with Bob and another EPR pair with Eve. So now uh, Alice performed the bare measurement or A1 and A2. The point here is that if Alice does not announce the outcome, then neither Bob uh, nor Eve can learn the outcome. So in this sense, the outcome play as private randomness. So from the previous slide, we know that local noise itself is useless. But here we, we, we can say that local noise can help if it combined with some other a state. So here, I would like to explain a little bit uh, how to construct a protocol to achieve the triparty product state. The, the idea is, uh, is, is as follows. Uh, we consider the uh, triparty pure state, Psi, many copies, n copies, and uh, for, for this state, it satisfies this condition. And uh, then what Alice and Bob do? First, uh, oh, we, uh, uh, in this setting, we consider that there is no communication and no local noise. Uh, the first step is that uh, Alice and Bob divide the encoded into two groups. One is, uh, one has P n copies, another with one min minus P n copies. And first, Alice uh, rotate uh, the f uh, NP copies and uh, perform, uh, and, uh, perform a measurement or, or a properly selected part of the system. And he obtained the uh, randomness from the KA system in such a way that whatever the result is, then the reduced state of Bob and the reduced state of Eve remain the same. After that, you can see that because from the point of view of Bob, his reduced state is the same, so virtually he can regard that his state is entangled with A prime and E. And from the entangled swapping protocol, we learned that uh, local noise can help to generate randomness. And indeed, we use here the, we use this part as uh, local noise for Bob. Then the next step is that Bob perform a global or global unitary or the n copies of his state and select the proper part of the system to perform measurement on KB in such a way that whatever the result is, then the, the state of A prime E, E remain the same. 
At the same time, A, the reduced state of the fresh copy A remain the same. So in this way, we could achieve the tripartite product state. So then what, what's the result here? In the case of no noise and no communication, the region is characterized by these three quadrants. And in case of free noise but no co co uh, communication, it's characterized by this. And in case of free noise and the free communication, characterized by this, and free communication and no noise, characterized by this. This is uh, for the, for the uh, state satisfy the satisfied this condition. And the blue region, the blue region is for the case no communication, no noise. And the purple region, where, purple, uh, here. The purple region is for the no communication, free noise. And the uh, red region is for the free communication and free noise. And the blue region is for the free communication and no noise. So a few remarks all the lot. So as I said that our setting is, uh, uh, um, the first two cases is uh, uh, due to the therapy of setting. So it, you can see that uh, uh, the result for the two settings is due to the therapy of theorem. Uh, that's good. And uh, we, can, we can see that local noise can boost randomness extraction. And uh, there is no bound randomness state in the sense that if randomness can be generated by global operations, then randomness can be generated generated locally. And we, we can prove that the region are tight in the first three cases, but we cannot prove the tightness for the fourth case in case that uh, uh, Alice and Bob can exchange quantum system through a different channel. So we uh, study this uh, case a little bit. Here, the task is that uh, we would like to look uh, locate uh, uh, randomness at one side as much as possible. So we obtain the rate by this, uh, uh, by this formula. Unfortunately, it is, well, it is a uh, regular series form, so it, it is not very useful. But, but still, we can prove that uh, it is not strongly additive. And for a build state, the value is given by one and a half. And also, we have a computable upper bound given by this. Finally, we consider the, uh, we consider the di dynamic setting in the, channel, uh, in the quantum channel model. Here, Bob would like to generate uh, private randomness against Eve, but he does not trust the surrounding quantum systems uh, since they are potentially entangled with, uh, uh, with the eavesdropper. But he, does, but he does trust the output of a quantum channel that connect with a trusted server, Alice. So the task is that how could Alice choose proper input such that uh, Bob can generate uh, private randomness as much as possible uh, by performing measurement of the output of the state and uh, the surrounding untrusted uh, quantum systems. So you can see that it is, uh, so the, the, the natural question is that what is the maximum rate? And indeed, this is the typical uh, capacity problem for a channel. And I want to point out that this model is in line with the standard model of transmitting information. And also, it has the server client structure that possibly realize in future quantum networks. Uh, so then, what's, uh, what's the result? Surprisingly, we can obtain the complete answer for the capacity problem. It is given by the, by by this singulated formula. And uh, interestingly, the second term is uh, it's just uh, the reverse coherent information of a channel. 
And indeed, this quantity was known a long time ago, more than 10 years ago, and it is additive. It, it was, I mean, it was known a long time ago, but its operational interpretation has been missing since then. So, in our model, we provide an operational interpretation for this long stored uh, uh, quantity. Let's uh, compare a little bit uh, with the coherent information of channel. So, here it is defined by this formula. The only difference is this here. It is the, uh, the phenomenon entropy of the input state, and here it is the entropy of output state. And we know that for this quantity, it uh, is not additive. But this fact does not permit us to have a good interpretation for this quantity, because we know that the regularization of this quantity represent the quantum information capacity of the channel. So, rather ridiculous, isn't it? Yes, summary. So in this talk, I talk the, about the distributed private uh, random distillation, and we obtain some result of the region for the two-sided uh, random distillation, and obtain some result of the one-sided uh, random distillation, and uh, we we provide the private uh, randomness capacity of a channel, uh, thus provide the, provide the first uh, operational interpretation for the reverse coherent information. Here are some open questions. Yes, I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you.